Oh, good morning again, Stephen. How are you? Hi, Tom. Thanks for dropping by. Um, understand we're looking at uh, instance and object diagrams today. Yeah, that's right, Tom. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the use of an instance diagram to produce data that's useful for uh, for testing, but also to get an idea of some of the values that uh, that attributes can have in a class model. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. So what I first do, is, as always, is I'm going to uh, change into my perspective. I'm going to look at a UML uh, structural diagram perspective, and I'm going to reuse a class model that we produced in an earlier video. Uh, for those that have seen it, uh, here it is, and others you can go back and uh, look at this one. So here's a class model for a parking meter system, and we've got motorists and parking meters and parking sessions. What I'm going to do is utilize this to create an instance diagram. And if you look at the uh, this class diagram, you notice that there are, are, are classes that have relationships with other things, and also there are attributes uh, in some of the classes. So a parking session has got a start time and an end time, a motorist has got a name, a vehicle's got a registration number, uh, and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new uh, package in the project browser, class instance model. And <clears throat> I'll put that below the class model, and I'm going to create a uh, new diagram there, which is a UML object diagram. I'll call it uh, the class instance model there in the name, and I'll create that diagram. I'm going to reuse the elements that we created earlier um, in the earlier video, and I'm going to pop those onto the put those onto the diagram. So the ones that I want are uh, the payment. Um, Let's have a look at the payment uh, session and um, the vehicle, the motorist, and the vehicle, um, and the parking meter. So I'm just going to simply drag these onto the uh, onto this new diagram. So and Stephen, while you're doing that, um, if we're going to reuse these elements that we had last time, does that wreck our old diagram? No, no, uh, not at all, uh, Tom. It. it uh, this is going to be a new diagram, and all, all we're simply doing is uh, is reusing uh, those elements. We're not putting in anything else uh, in, into those class um, elements. We can create these as instances. But there are options if you don't want to uh, if you don't want to allow changes to change a diagram. Then there is an option to what's called like uh, freeze visible, which means that you can freeze the, the diagram so that new changes don't affect that diagram. Right. Here we have this and we've got this option to it default to drop as instance uh, and uh, I'm going to select for all. So the behavior there is that this will, uh, this drop as instance will apply to all the elements that I'm dropping on. So I'm just going to go okay to that. And, and that's different see. from last time because last time we dropped as a link, didn't we? When I that's right. Them. Last last time we dropped as a, a, a link and this uh, this is dropping as an as an instance this time, which means it's a um, like an example of, of, a, of a class. So we had vehicle as a class element. Now we've got vehicle as an object, and so it's a, it's an actual. Uh, what, what we're doing is, is trying to specify an actual vehicle with a particular registration number and a particular motorist with a, with a name. Um, I'm going to use the uh, using from the layout ribbon. I'm going to use uh, this diagram layout, uh, and I'm going to choose the apply default layout. And um, there we have those uh, elements uh, there. Uh, in the um, in there. I'm, what I'm going to do, Tommy, is I'm going to go back now because what I didn't do was put the relationships in there. So I'm going to just uh, backpedal there and show you another way of doing this. You notice that they're laid out um, in a, a linear fashion there. But if you look back at, if you go back, if we go back and look at this now, uh, and I'm put the parking meter. So I'm going to put the same um, elements on. So the motorist, um, the parking meter, and the parking session. Now watch what happens this time when I do it. I'm going to drag them on again, and um, you see this other other option here saying copy connectors. So again, we're going to drop them as an instance and uh, we're going to select for all, but this time we're going to have copy connectors and look at what will happen, um, what the difference that will happen. So we've got them there, <clears throat> exactly the same thing happened, but you see that those uh, relationships are kind of overlaid atop, across the element. So this time I'm going to go apply default layout. And you notice that it nicely lays out uh, the elements in a in a fashion that's uh, much easier uh, to see their relationships. That's interesting, and and also what was interesting as well was you were able to delete something from the diagram, but it didn't delete it from the project browser. 
Yeah, that's right, Tom. The, the diagram is best seen as a view of the elements that are in the project browser or repository. And so it's kind of like a visualization of those elements. Um, the default behavior that I've uh, got defined is just to delete them from the diagram. Uh, if I want to delete them from the project browser as well, uh, I can do that by holding the control key down and deleting them. So it's a very useful thing. Sometimes you put, you know, elements on the diagram that you don't uh, want on there for some reason, and you can just uh, quickly delete them off and, and they're gone. You can hit the undo button um, after doing that and they will um, come back again as well, which is uh, quite a powerful feature. So um, let me just save this. I'm going to use the keyboard uh, shortcut control S and I've saved that there. And I'll show you what I mean by this um, delete thing. So I'm just hitting the delete key now, deleting that off and it's gone from there, but it was the um, parking session. And you can see, as you said over here, it's not gone from the, the um, project browser. And if I hit control Z on my keyboard, uh, it's back again. So always think about the diagram as being a view of the elements that are in the repository. Okay, so what we what we can do now with this, I want to uh, talk about this notion is that one of the things that is useful, one use of the object diagram uh, is for the purposes of providing testing data. When developers are uh, developing uh, software or systems, uh, coming up with, with real and valid testing data is obviously a, a challenge sometimes, and often developers don't know uh, the business conditions, the business constraint very well. And so it's much better for a business analyst type person who's working very closely with the uh, with the business people to define um, some of the, uh, the, the data that would be useful uh, for testing. So let's just take a simple case, this motorist. Now, if we look back at our class model, the motorist had an attribute in there. We, we did this last time. And you notice that the attribute um, is name and the type is char 50. If we go back to our model here, um, what we can do is we can uh, right mouse click on this element, um, go to the features option and set run state. And you'll see that name is here. I can put an operator is equals and I can put an, a, a, um, a name in there. So I can put an actual name and I'll call it um, uh, Jenny Thornton Smith. And that then becomes um, the, the value of, of the name for this model. Uh, you notice there it come up. It's come up as in the in the attribute there, and I can also, if I want to, um, give the um, same name uh, to the object. It slightly changes the orientation of that element, and I can do the same thing uh, for the other elements as well. So the vehicle, again, uh, if we go back to the class model and have a look, look at that, the vehicle's got a registration number. It's char six, and so I can um, right mouse click on this, go to the features window, and set the run state, and again the registration value. Um, press equals there and um, I'll press um, ABC-567, um, for example, whoopsie daisy, 567. Uh, uh, and close that and I can do the same um, for these uh, other elements. So um, the parking meter might have an ID, I think it's got an ID. So again, I can go to the features window, set that run state. Um, the parking meter has got um, an ID and let's call it um, SM0235 dash um, Z and D for digital. So, and the meter type um, is digital, and we have a number of different uh, types, and that's what um, we call this one type. And those elements are going there. The parking session, again, just to quickly look at that one, we put our run state in start time um, equals, and the value is um, 2.35, and the end time. Um, is um, 4.45 and let's put a, a payment value in as well and let's do that set the run state for that and let's make it a, a reasonably uh, good value parking meter and let's put in um, a cost of um, five dollars so we've got that we can then uh, again just um, apply our um, layout to the diagram um, and I'll just save that and then apply the full layout. Uh, it neatens the diagram up. Occasionally, we might just have to move something, but remember we can use these, uh, our guidelines again, to help us there. So uh, that's, a, um, that's a quick look at this, uh, Tom. And like I said, I can, I can if I want to, I can, um, you know, reuse these um, 
these values here and and, uh, and put them on the parking meter. But I could I could put uh, any value on that parking meter that made sense to me. Very cool, very cool. So yeah. what would we do with this diagram now then? So this diagram uh, would be useful in the elements that, that are on it. So if we go if we go in here, we can see that these elements have been um, have been created uh, here, and um, uh, so the elements have been created. So what I can do is I can use this for um, for testing data. So I can give it to the developers and say, hey, here's data that you can put in to your model for uh, for testing. So. So they could write sort of test cases and test sets against this? Yeah, that's exactly right, Tom. They, they, so they're not having to spend the time uh, making up values. And like I said earlier, they don't know the business very well. And so it's much better that someone closer to the, the business people, like the business analyst, can come up with test data that um, that really will uh, put the system under, uh, you know, under test. So um, we might we might rename uh, this one, for example, in the project browser, we might say class instance model uh, and we might rename that um, as uh, class uh, test data model, something like that. And we could then create separate uh, packages for this. We can call it um, test data um, 001, for example, and we could then drag all of those elements uh, into that uh, into that one there. And then we could uh, simply make a copy of this one uh, as a starting point. Uh, so we can use the copy feature here. We right mouse click, copy, full structure for duplication there. And let's um, let's paste that in now, uh, paste from package. And let's call this one, instead of being uh, just the copy of one, let's call this uh, two. And we could put some annotations on this, you know, um, you know, long names or something like that, that, um, that are, describing the type of test test data. This one could be, you know, uh, long sessions or something. Um, uh, so that allows us to, to create multiple sets of um, multiple sets of data, which is uh, which is quite powerful. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. That's uh, a very good look at the um, at these instance objects diagrams. Um, yeah. for, for all those who are enjoying the, the series so far, uh, feel free to like and subscribe and uh, feel free to comment on if there's any videos you'd like to see us do next. Thanks again, Stephen. Thank you, Tom.